Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Splunk OpenTelemetry Collector configuration. So the first thing that I want to do is briefly explain the components of the Splunk distribution of OpenTelemetry Collector. So as you probably know, the OpenTelemetry Collector project is open sourced, but it does have additional distributions outside of the core version which includes a Splunk distribution of the OpenTelemetry Collector. And what we mean by that is that there are Splunk-specific modifications to the components of the collector, uh, such as receivers, processors, and exporters. So the receivers component of the OpenTelemetry Collector is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You can configure multiple receivers to receive data from data-producing sources, like your infrastructure and backend services, which would include uh, traces, metrics, and logs. And once the data is received, it is then sent to processors which can modify and transform the data. So in addition to whatever the data source is providing to you, you may want to add additional data attributes to whatever's being sent. And then once the data is processed by the processors, it is then sent to exporters. And again, it's exactly what it sounds like. An exporter exports the data to a target backend service. And in our case, it would be Splunk Observability Cloud or Splunk Cloud Platform. The extensions component of the collector extends the functionality of the Hotel Collector, and we'll see an example of an extension later on. So let's take a look real quick at an example OpenTelemetry Collector configuration. And I want to emphasize that this particular sample is not uh, specific to the Splunk distribution of the OpenTelemetry Collector. This is just a generic sample configuration. So I'm going to navigate to VS Code where this uh, example configuration is located. And right at the top of the file on line one is where the receivers are defined. Under the receivers keyword, you have the first receiver definition, which is the open telemetry protocol receiver. And when you add the OTLP receiver, the only thing that you have to specify are the protocols that you're willing to accept data over, which in this case, it's gRPC and HTTP. In the next section on line seven, we have processors. And the only processor that's defined for this particular collector configuration is the batch processor. The purpose of the batch processor is to batch data points together before actually exporting them to a backend platform. You could potentially cause a lot of network congestion if you don't batch data points uh, in groups before sending them off to a backend platform. And then on line 10, we have exporters defined. And the only exporter that we currently have defined is the OpenTelemetry Protocol exporter. The only required attribute for this particular exporter is the endpoint. So when you're exporting data, you do have to specify where you want to send that data. And that's what this endpoint attribute is for, so that you can specify and tell the collector where to send the data or where to export the data. And then on line 14, we have an extensions definition. And under the extensions definition, we've added several extensions, including the health check extension, uh, performance profiling, and Z pages. And as I said before, the extensions are optional extended functionality that you can add to a collector's configuration. So for instance, we have the health check extension, which basically adds a health check endpoint to our collector. So if we want to check the health of the collector itself, of the collector service, and ensure that it's running uh, on a particular node, we can hit the health check endpoint and it will return a status of the hotel collector itself. Now, once you've defined your receivers, processors, exporters, and extensions, you'll have to define pipelines that include uh, those components in a single pipeline instance. So let's take a look at the service definition on line 19. So something that's really important about the hotel collector configuration is that none of the uh, receivers, processors, exporters, extensions will be active unless you define services for them, which for receivers, processors, exporters, that means creating pipelines for them. And then for extensions, they have their own dedicated service that you would define. So as you can see here, we're defining an extension service. And in that service, we're including uh, all three of the extensions that we defined here. And for receivers, processors, and exporters, we define pipelines. And there's several types of pipelines that we can define, which include traces, metrics, and logs. So in this case, we have three separate pipelines, traces, metrics, logs. 
but we could actually define multiple pipelines of the same type and give them a unique identifier. So for instance, I could copy traces here, add a forward slash, and then I could uh, add a unique identifier for a second pipeline for traces. So this is the unique name that I'm giving the pipeline, and then this is the type of the pipeline, which is a traces pipeline. And then within the pipeline definition, we have to specify what receivers, what processors, and what exporters we want to include in the pipeline. It could be all of the receivers and processors and exporters that we defined up here, or it could be a subset of those, depending on what kind of pipeline that we're creating. And another thing that I want to mention is that this naming uh, can be applied to uh, the other components of the collector configuration as well. So if we had multiple OTLP uh, exporters, for instance, I could uh, have a second uh, OTLP exporter defined as well. But again, I want to emphasize that defining the exporter here doesn't activate the exporter in my OTEL collector. In order for this exporter to be active, I have to actually add this to a specific pipeline under the service definitions. So for instance, if I wanted to add this to the second traces pipeline, I would want to uh, copy that name. And then under exporters, I'd add a comma here and paste it in. Once I've added it to a pipeline, that exporter will be active. So we've been reviewing this particular configuration because it's a good starter sample of an OTEL collector configuration. However, it is not specific to the Splunk distribution of the OpenTelemetry collector. So what we're gonna do is review the default configuration for the Splunk distribution of the OpenTelemetry collector. The default configuration for the Splunk OTEL collector is automatically added to the host that you install the OTEL collector on if you're using the uh, provided installer scripts. And to get the installer script, we can actually use the Splunk Observability Cloud integration wizard to set up the installation for us. So I'm going to navigate to my browser and then to Splunk Observability Cloud. So from here, I'll expand the sidebar and then navigate to data management. And then I'll select add integration. And then I'm going to select deploy Splunk Open Telemetry Collector. This takes me to the OTEL Collector wizard. And if I click next here, I can then configure the installation by selecting the platform. In my case, I have a Linux instance that I want to use, so I'm going to select Linux. I'm going to leave the host monitoring as agent and not select data forwarding uh, for gateway because we're not using a gateway in this case. I'll leave the environment empty and then we're going to select no log collection uh, and I'll leave the default uh, selection here for auto discovery and auto instrumentation. And then I'm gonna select the Splunk access token. Now the Splunk access token is very important because the installer script is going to use this access token to authenticate with my Splunk Observability Cloud organization. And then I'll select next. And as you can see here, it gives me several options to actually deploy the collector. So I can use the installer script, which is recommended, but I could also use a configuration management tool like Ansible, uh, Puppet, Chef, and Salt. And then it gives me step-by-step -step instructions to download the uh, installer script and then run the script with the uh, parameters that I specified on the previous screen. So the two most important parameters being the realm, which in this case is US1, and the uh, organization access token. Without that information, the collector will not be configured in a way that it can actually communicate with uh, Observability Cloud. So the installer would add these to the default uh, configuration file that it adds to the instance that you're running this command on. And down here in step C, it tells you where the default uh, configuration file is located in Etsy Hotel uh, Collector. Now I've already run this command on an instance and I have the default configuration file pulled up in VS Code. So I'm currently in Etsy Hotel Collector on my instance and this agentconfig.yaml file is the default configuration that was added by the installer script. So let's take a look at that file. So as you can see, this default configuration has a lot more functionality added to it than the uh, sample configuration that we were previously looking at. 
I'm not going to go over all of the details, but I do want to highlight some of the Splunk specific components. So as you can see up at the top here, if you use the installer script, then a lot of these uh, variables are defined automatically for you, uh, such as like the ingest uh, URLs. And if we scroll down below the extensions definition, uh, down on line 32, we start to have the receivers uh, defined for this particular hotel configuration. And this includes things like the host metrics receiver uh, so that we can get uh, resource utilization about the host. And then if I keep scrolling down, we can see some of the other uh, receivers that are defined, including a Splunk specific uh, signal FX uh, receiver. So in this case, this would be uh, the Splunk observability cloud uh, receiver. And then starting on line 96, we have some processors that are defined uh, including the batch processor that we already saw, and then a memory limiter processor as well. This processor just ensures that you're not going to be taking up too much memory on the host and causing an out-of-memory issue. They've also included a resource detection processor, which will detect uh, if the collector is on um, a cloud system like uh, AWS EC2, for instance, and then it will append attributes that might be specific to that cloud provider. Starting on line 125, we start defining exporters. And this is really where some of the most important Splunk specific information is included. So as you can see on line 127, we have Splunk APM if we want to enable traces. And when we enable this uh, particular exporter, we also have to provide the Splunk organizational access token as well as the trace URL endpoint. And the values for all of these attributes are stored in environment variables. On line 131, we have the signal FX exporter, which is Splunk Observability Cloud. And that includes the access token definition, uh, the API and ingest URL of Splunk Observability Cloud. Having said that, I'm pretty sure you could replace 133 and 134 with just the realm uh, keyword and then specify the realm. However, I'll leave it as is with the API and ingest URLs. On line 141, we're also uh, defining the Splunk uh, HTTP event collector, uh, which is going to be exporting logs. Now this configuration does diverge a little bit from what we had in the integration wizard because uh, we are uh, pushing logs in this case using Splunk HEC. And we have to specify an HEC token as well as the HEC URL endpoint. And you'll notice that there's also a second Splunk HEC dedicated uh, specifically for profiling. Now I'm going to skip down to the service section and you'll notice here how the extensions and pipelines are defined. We have a traces pipeline, metrics, uh, metrics, but specific to internal. So this is monitoring the internal metrics of the hotel collector. And then there are multiple log pipelines as well. And you might be thinking that this is quite a lot of configuration for the hotel collector. And it is kind of hard to parse and understand what's actually happening here. And there's actually a tool that allows you to visualize hotel collector configurations. It's called hotel bin. And I'll show you what that looks like. So let's navigate to the browser. And then I have uh, hotel bin already pulled up. And so it's just hotel bin.io. And here's a sample uh, hotel configuration in the left uh, window pane here. And what you're seeing on the right-hand side is a visual representation of the pipelines that are defined in this um, hotel collector configuration. So on line 25, you have the traces pipeline, and then you have the traces pipeline here with the OTLP receiver, the batch processor, and the OTLP exporter as well. And then similarly for the metrics and logs pipeline, you have uh, visual representations for each of those pipelines and the receivers, processors, and exporters that are included. So let's grab that default configuration file and we'll copy and paste this into uh, hotel bin. So if I uh, zoom out a little bit, you can see the traces pipeline clearly the metrics pipeline. All of our pipelines are a lot easier to read and digest 
uh, than just reading through the configuration file itself. The other thing that's really nice about Hotelbin is that it will validate your configuration uh, in the browser. So if you take a look at the top uh, drop down menu here, it says validation browser only, which is kind of limited uh, validation of the file, but you can actually do um, distribution specific validation. So we can actually validate this configuration file for the Splunk distribution of the open telemetry collector. So if I uh, click the drop down menu here, you can see here Splunk open telemetry collector. So I'll select that and I'll say validate against this version. But if I wanted to validate against uh, an older version, I could as well. So I'll select validate against this version. And if there's any problems with the validation, you'll see the warnings and errors in the validation at the bottom here. So you can see that I have one error. It says the provided configuration is invalid for uh, line 148. So if I scroll down here, a non-empty token. And I think, uh, I believe that, I'm not certain, but I believe this is because it's trying to evaluate these environment variables. Uh, so if I were to um, escape uh, this environment variable, the error for that particular line goes away. And I believe I could also do something like this and it will it will change the uh, kind of resolve the error for that specific line. So this is a great tool for not only visualizing your hotel collector configurations, but also validating them as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, we'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching.